We will start with uh, tutorial problems, okay. Some very simple problems we will take first and from simple, all problems are simple only, but let us look at these two concept questions, okay. Why are these two concept questions very nice? Because they will really clarify a lot of doubts, okay, which, which a few of you may still have. So what is given is this, that two cars, okay, this is one car, this is second car, okay, they travel along a straight road. And what is given is that the position of these cars as a function of time is provided to us. And this is the, the position of first car, it is a straight line, okay, car A. This, how does the position change, okay, velocity is 0 here because the slope is 0, velocity increase, 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 okay. Then the velocity slowly start decreasing, 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 decreasing and it goes. So how does the curve loop, the slope is 0, the slope increase, okay. Then the slope remains constant little bit, then the slope starts decreasing. And what we are asked here is that, that what of the statements are true? That at time 2, t2, both the cars have travelled the same distance, okay. So look here, so at time t2, both the cars have they travelled the same distance? They clearly have not because distance is essentially the position and both of them have different positions, so they have not travelled the same distance. Second option, at time t1, both cars have the same speed. Now what is speed? Speed is the, the slope of this curve. Now look at this, the slope of this curve B is, is a little bit larger than the slope of curve A. Since these two slopes are different, at time T1, both cars do not have the same speed, so this is not right. C, both cars have the same speed at some time T less than T1. Now this is a very interesting problem in calculus. So for both cars to have the same speed, okay, what should they have? That the slope of this curve okay, should be this, uh, uh, this is a straight line. So this slope should be equal to the slope of this curve at some intermediate point between 0 and T1. Will that be true? Clearly, you just take this line and slowly start sliding it parallel to it, okay, start sliding it, sliding it, sliding it and you will see that there will be some point here where this line will be parallel to this. What does that mean? That the slope at this time here, okay, for this curve and this curve is the same. And as a result, this statement that both cars have the same speed at some time t less than t1 is right. So what we are doing is that we are just analyzing this curve. That take this line, keep sliding it parallel to it, keep sliding it, sliding it, sliding it, sliding it till it is tangential to that. You will see that at this point, this line we are sliding becomes tangential to this, which means that the slope of the top line and the slope at this point here will be the same and so they have the same speed. Both cars have the same acceleration at some time t less than t1, okay. Now what is the acceleration? Acceleration means, okay, that acceleration means that the, the curvature of this, that, uh, uh, that, the, that the, the slope should also change. Now note here that this speed remains constant, okay. Why? Because speed is nothing but the slope of this curve which is a straight line. So the acceleration for this thing is 0. Whereas you note here, in this case you will see that in between 0 and T1, the slope of the curve is always increasing. So the acceleration is always positive. So both cars cannot have the same acceleration because this is 0 and this has some finite acceleration. So this statement is wrong. And the last statement, okay, both cars have same acceleration at some time t less than t1 and t2 between this. Now this is true. Why? Because note here that here the slope, okay, the slope is increasing, okay, then the slope starts decreasing, okay. So increase, decrease. So somewhere velocity, okay, so velocity is increasing here velocity is decreasing here, okay. So somewhere the velocity, uh, the, the acceleration is positive now because velocity is increasing at other part because look, look, the slope is decreasing. So the velocity is decreasing, so the acceleration is negative and because of continuity between T1 and T2, velocity increases, velocity decreases, so somewhere the acceleration has to be 0, okay, which is the same as the acceleration of this. So both cars have the same acceleration at some time T less than T1, less than T2. Okay, so that much is the information that we can glean from the curves, position, velocity, position, time curves. Fine. Now this is a very interesting problem. So this is the problem that I had discussed. Okay. So this child okay, or this person is standing at the midpoint of this merry-go-round. Now what we do is that okay, this merry-go-round, we keep on accelerating it such that 
uh, keep on rotating it such that it reaches an angular speed of omega. It reaches an angular speed of omega and at that instant okay, the child does not want to stay at the center. So, he starts walking out okay, from the center with a velocity with a velocity v u in the outward direction. Okay. And so, what is asked to that that if I look from the top what is the direction of the acceleration that the child will face if I look from the top. So, let us discuss this using the whiteboard. What we have is this. So, if I look from the top this is how the merry go round looks like. This is the center where the child is standing. This is omega or theta dot. Now, let us say I fix a coordinate system like this. This is E r hat the child is almost at the center okay, and this has to be E theta hat. Now, what is the overall acceleration? The overall acceleration is r double dot okay, minus r theta dot square E r okay, plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot okay, into E theta. Now, note one thing what is happening here is that the child starts to move out with uniform velocity. Okay. With respect to this the speed is uniform. Okay. It will, uh, so, what does that mean is that that r dot is equal to u which is in this direction because the child is starting to move out with a uniform speed with respect to this in the direction uh, along the radial direction. So, this is r dot which is u, but r double dot is 0. Okay. Now, what is r here at this point? At this point just at the origin r is also 0. So, this term becomes completely 0. Whereas, look at this theta double dot. Note that this is rotating uniformly at an angular speed of omega. So, theta dot is equal to omega. So, theta double dot should be equal to 0. So, this is gone. So, what is the term that left? 2 r dot theta dot. What is theta dot? Theta dot is this omega. What is r dot? r dot is the speed in the radial direction okay, or the velocity in the radial direction. What is that? u uniform. So, what do we have? That the speed or the, the acceleration that the child will face will be 2 u into omega. What is the direction? e theta. Now, what is this direction from looking from, uh, from the top? It is this direction. So, we come to this okay, and so answer b is the answer because from the top this will be the direction which we will see that the child will face the acceleration and this is the direction that if you try to move out you will tend to be toppled in this direction and this is one example of the so called Coriolis force. Okay. So, let us start with some simple problems. You are given that the acceleration depends on velocity like this 3 minus 0 0.01 v square. We are asked to find out v after half lap okay, v 0 the car starts from rest. So, v 0 is 0, uh, r is the radius of the track is 200 meters. So, the total distance travelled in the half lap is just pi r which is 628.32. Now, note that acceleration is a function of velocity. So, what do we want? We to want to have a relation between velocity and distance. So, what do we do? We write dv by dt as v times dv by dx do this integral okay, v dv by integral a dv x naught is beginning to x v naught is the beginning velocity to final velocity. Now, what we want what we know is that that we want to find out what is the velocity when this x becomes 6.238. So, what do we do? We do this integral. This integral can be evaluated okay, so using simple method substitute v is equal to uh, this, this will just look as this integral from standard integral will look as log of 3 minus 0.001 v square. Why? Because substitute v is equal to v square is equal to x. So, v dv will be equal to dx and this just becomes integral of d by uh, a minus bx which is log of a minus bx. Okay. Uh, standard integral we do this what is x is goes from x 0 it is 0 to final x which is 628.32 solve it okay. we will get that this minus v square is equal to this value. Now, how do we want to find out that what will be the velocity we take exponent on both sides. So, we will see that 3 minus 0 0.011 v square is this. This, By the way all these things are there in the notes uh, in, the in the slides which I am displaying in the class. So, when they will be uploaded you can have a look at them if they are not already uploaded. Solve for v and you are done. 
Now the second important question is that how do you determine the maximum speed that the car can reach? Now the maximum speed that car can reach, okay, just note that this is acceleration, 3 minus 0 0.001 v square. Now if this quantity is positive, the speed can only increase. Okay, the moment acceleration is positive, the speed can only increase. The speed can only decrease when this acceleration becomes negative or it becomes deceleration. And the speed will stop increasing when this acceleration is equal to 0. So essentially, if you want to find out what is the maximum speed the car can take, we just keep on finding out the point till which the acceleration is 0 because beyond that, the speed can only decrease. So just substitute A, this should be equal to 0 and we can find out that this is the speed okay, at which the acceleration becomes 0 or in other words, this is the maximum possible speed that this car can reach because any velocity okay, which is different than this, the acceleration will be negative or in other words, what you will see is that, that the, if the velocity tries to increase okay, beyond this, that the acceleration decreases and the velocity actually has to slow down. Okay, so the velocity can only slow down after that, the peak velocity you can get only at this point because the velocity can only decrease after this and that is the maximum velocity or the maximum speed. speed. Second problem is a very easy problem again an example of what we had done. Slider block, block A moves to the left, okay, it moves to the left with a constant velocity of 6 meter per second, determine the velocity of block B. So what do we do? We just put our coordinate system in principle, this is a 2 degree of freedom coordinate system that this has 1 degree of freedom x, this is other degree of freedom y, so 2. But what is there? That these are connected by inextensible strings and as a result, okay, what we note is that uh, this is a 1 degree of freedom problem, why? Because what is the constraint? That this portion remains always constant, the total length of the string is what? xa plus 2yb plus some constant and this is equal to the length of the string. Now you differentiate that with respect to time, what do we get? x dot plus 3y dot, uh, yb dot is equal to 0 and we can immediately figure out that xa is equal to 6 meter per second, so vb will be equal to minus 2 meter per second or in other words because the coordinate axis positive was downwards minus 2 meter second means v is positive upwards okay so there is uh, one question okay that uh, like many colleges are asking and that question is about this concept problem that i had uh, that i had taken from Bear and johnston 10 the concept problem was if you look from the top what we have is we have a merry go round the merry go round rotates okay from the top in a clockwise direction now the child starts from the center okay and at that instant uh, he or she wants to move out with a velocity of u in the radial direction okay it starts from the center where the r is zero and what is asked to us is that that what is the instantaneous acceleration or what is the acceleration at that given instant okay when the child starts to move out with speed uh, with velocity u in the outward direction now to figure that out what we do is that from the origin okay we have this unit uh, uh, unit vector in the radial direction we have a unit vector in the normal in the perpendicular direction uh, and this we will figure out what are the components of acceleration for this particular problem we see that the components corresponding to the radial vector are r double dot minus r theta dot square now note one thing that r double dot term is 0, why? Because we are told here that the child is trying to walk out with a constant speed u okay? and that constant speed essentially is a speed in a radial direction relative to this moving merry-go-round. Okay? So that one point I want to clarify that if the child wants to walk with a speed u, okay, it will be in the radial direction relative to this merry-go-round. So r double dot in that case is 0. Second thing is r theta dot square. Now when the child is starting from the origin, what is r? at the origin r is very small or 0, so this term becomes 0. What does that mean? That there is no component okay, in the er direction. Now let us check if there is any component in, the, uh, in this theta direction or not. To do that, let us go to this first term r theta double dot. Now note one thing that the child, because it is moving with the merry-go-round, it has the same components of acceleration as the merry-go-round plus there is an additional relative motion the child is trying to carry out. What is that relative motion? The child is trying to go outwards in the radial direction. Okay? The child is trying to go out in the radial direction at a speed u. So that is the only additional component it has over this omega okay, for this, uh, this merry-go-round. 
So theta double dot is 0, why? Because theta dot is constant, it is rotating, this entire merry-go-round is rotating at a constant omega. So theta dot is equal to omega, theta double dot equal to 0. Let us come to the last portion, it is 2 r dot theta dot. r dot is nothing, okay? But the speed with which the kid is trying to move with uh, relative to this merry-go-round in the relative direction. So r dot will become just u and theta dot is omega. So 2 u omega in the direction e theta will be the acceleration that will be faced by the, that will be the acceleration of the kid. And what is that direction? That direction is in the direction of e theta. So if you look at the merry-go-round from the top, we see that the acceleration is in this direction going to the left. And so the correct answer uh, for that concept question is B, where the direction is in this direction. Another question that was asked on the chat, why we have taken this YB to be equal to VB. Note that we have not taken YB equal to VB. VB. Only thing that we have changed is we have said that differentiate this equation with respect to time and the relative and the, and the corresponding equation we will get will be x a dot plus 3 y b dot all the constants become 0 will be equal to 0. But x a dot okay, is nothing but the, uh, the velocity of, uh, of bar a okay, in this direction and v b dot okay, so uh, and y b dot is equal to v b and then we immediately find out what is the corresponding velocity or the, uh, the corresponding speed of this. So it will be 2 meter per second upwards, why? Because this comes out to be negative, our sign convention is downwards is positive with respect to the fixed axis. So minus implies the speed is actually upwards. In uh, we will just take 5 minutes to solve this, a very simple problem for projectile motion. So it is a baseball machine, okay, we can replace it by cricket machine, okay, the problem does not change. What we have is that the height from where this comes out is 1.5 meters, the velocity is in the horizontal direction. What is asked is that, that it wants to travel a distance of 12 meters. Okay. So at what horizontal velocity v naught should this be thrown so that the, the batter can hit it at a distance of 1 meter from the bottom. Very simple problem. Okay. Let us have a go at it. So we are asked to find out that uh, if this height should be 1 meter, then what should be the corresponding velocity here. So it is straightforward that you can apply equations of motion in the y direction, apply equations of motion in the x direction and then one particular approach will be to determine time t for the projectile to fall to 1 meter. Okay. So find out what is the final velocity that you get here. There is a problem in the printing here. Okay. So this solution is taken from Beer and Johnston. So y final is 1 meter, x is equal to 12 meter, y0 is equal to 1.5 meter. This is y0. Okay. Uh, so what we have taken, we have taken the, the coordinate system to be here at the bottom. So 1.5 meters is the initial y displacement, 1 meter is the final y displacement, x is 12 meter. So what do we know? That we want to go from here to here. So yf is equal to y0 plus uh, uh, 0t. Why? Because the ball is projected in the horizontal direction. So there is no velocity in the vertical direction. So yf is equal to y0. So this is not 3.5, this is not 5. Just note one thing that this will be 1, 1 1.5. And the difference will come out to be minus 0.5, okay, minus half gt square. So you will get what is the time. And in the x direction, what you say is the x is equal to 0 plus vx 0 t is equal to v naught t, okay, and then solve this equation because this distance is given to us, speed in the horizontal direction, velocity in the horizontal direction remains constant. So 12 meter is equal to v naught into this time, and you immediately get what is v naught. So very straightforward problem. There is this one question which uh, many of you had attempted. So a bike moves on a straight road starting at the speed 0, so it starts from 0, this is velocity, this is time, starts at 0 and then the bike can either accelerate, okay, it can accelerate with a value of 2 meter per second square or it can decelerate at a value of 1 meter per second square or after accelerating when it reaches some constant velocity, it can take that constant velocity and it can keep decelerating till at 100 seconds, the bike has to come to uh, rest again that its veloc velocity should be 0 again. And this trajectory is one sample trajectory which can satisfy this criteria that it accelerated at 2 meter per second square, constant velocity at whatever acceleration has happened and then ultimately deceleration at 1 meter per second square and goes back uh, uh, at uh, time t is equal to 100 seconds, the velocity is equal to 0. Now note that in this case, if you want to find out what is the maximum distance that is covered, you have to note that the distance covered is the area. So there are various possible ways in which you can do it. 
but the maximum distance will be the maximum area and the maximum area can only happen when this only continuously accelerates and continuously decelerates that will be the maximum area and I believe this calculation is correct and the answer comes out to be around 3300. Now going to problem number 7, what do we have is all the dimensions are given to you in miles per hour and feet per, feet per second square. So what I have told uh, given here is that, that this is a problem from Merriam and Craig, uh, Craig sample problem uh, in uh, chapter 2 of dynamics 14 problem. Okay. So what we are given is that <coughs> car A is accelerating in the direction of its motion. So this is the direction of acceleration at 3 feet per second square. Okay. So feet, meter, it does not matter really, stay consistent with the units. Car B is coming in a curve, what is the radius of that curve? 450 is the radius of the curve. What is the speed? 30 miles per hour. So what we are asked to find out is determine the accelerate, velocity and acceleration which car B appears to uh, have to an observer in car A. So what we want to find out is relative to this moving frame A, what is the acceleration this, uh, uh, what is the acceleration of this car B? And if car A has reached a speed of 45 miles per hour for the positions represented. So acceleration is given 3 feet per second square for this here. For this we have to find out in this position, the, velo the, uh, the velocity or the speed of this car is 45 miles per hour or correspondingly the velocity is uh, 45 miles per hour in this direction. Okay. Note the coordinate system that we are putting here, y in vertical direction, x in the horizontal direction inwards. This is the car moving in this direction. I had given some uh, conversion terms that 1 mile per hour is 44 feet per second. We do this, what do we know? That V of B, okay, total velocity of B is V of A plus relative velocity of B with respect to A. Now how do we find out what are the velocities of A and B for the positions continue? Speed, okay, so speed of uh, car A is 45 miles per hour converted into 66 feet per second. Speed of B is 44 feet per second. Now note one thing, we can do this problem vectorially. This angle is 30 degree, just the speed is tangential to this curve, the velocity is tangential to this curve and the magnitude of this one is 44 feet per second. So we just put that in here. Okay, so this is 44 feet per second, this is a vector corresponding to the velocity of car B. This horizontal one is 66 feet per second is the corresponding vector for this. Okay, this is 30. Okay. So we have put uh, these values here. Okay. So the angle, this uh, tangent okay, makes with this line is 60 degree from whatever values that are given to us. Okay. This is 30 degrees, so this has to be 60 degrees. And what we can do, this magnitude is given, this magnitude is given. We can apply a law of triangles and what is this? V of B okay, is given by V of A plus V of B relative to A. And we can simply use uh, 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 the triangle law and can obtain what is V of B comma A. It will come out to be uh, 58.2 feet per second and at this angle we can simply apply law of cosines and the law of sines to get this particular value. This magnitude is known, this magnitude is known. Law of cosines will give you what is the magnitude of V of B comma A and once you know the magnitude you can use sine rule that 44 divided by sine theta. Okay, will be equal to VBA which we obtained from cos rule divided by sin 60. From that we will get this angle. Now the second portion is we want to find out what is the relative acceleration okay, of B with respect to A. For that we write down the equation that acceleration of B is equal to acceleration of A again plus acceleration of B relative to A. Now what is the acceleration of A? Acceleration of A is given to us. Acceleration of uh, A is 3 feet per second square in this direction. Now how to find out what is the acceleration of B? The B is moving at a constant speed, so there is no tangential acceleration but it can have a normal acceleration given by V square divided by rho where rho is the radius of curvature. Okay, so V square by rho, so that is the acceleration and what is the direction? The direction will be along this. Okay, it will be exactly along this and it will make an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Let's put that in, this is the acceleration of B, acceleration of A is 3 feet per second square and what we have seen is that, that acceleration of B is nothing but acceleration of A plus acceleration of B relative to A 
and now this problem we can do in two different ways one simple way is that this angle is unknown to you, us we can use components and we can say that the x component okay the x component of acceleration of b related to uh, a is what is the x component of this minus x component of this which is 4.4 .4 cos 30 minus 3 feet per second square and you will get what is a of uh, uh, what is the x component of acceleration of b relative to a what is the acceleration of uh, b related to y is simply the sine component of this just for this triangle 4.4 .4 sin 30 so we get both of these components and if you want to find out what is this angle beta what this makes with respect to the horizontal the relative velocity acceleration of b with respect to a we just use sin rule that 4.4 .4 divided by sin beta will be equal to 2.34 divided by sin 30 and from which we can also get the angle. So there are various ways in which we can do the problem. So the simplest is we start from a fixed frame of reference obtain the absolute accelerations absolute velocities for both a and b and once we do that the relative velocities can just come by writing a relation like this you can do that problem either vectorially or can using components in the x and y direction both are equivalent and whatever suits you okay is the best uh, way in which you can do this problem okay so with this much okay so let us uh, uh, stop now kinematics of particles